G'day. I'm going to be replacing the lamp in this Daiwa SWR on power meter, which stopped working at some stage with an LED. So first thing to do is to unscrew it. Two screws on either side and one at the top. I've already removed those. Take the top cover off. And this is where it gets interesting. You could unscrew the, the front. There's a screw on either side, two under here, remove it. But that um, seems like a lot of hard work. So what I'm gonna do, uh, disconnect these two. First of all, I'm just gonna mark, mark one. I am just like to identify my connectors, just so there's no mix up. Pull it out, pull it out. Get the wires out of the way. And all you need is a short, stubby Phillips screwdriver. It's a little bit fiddly. And of course my fingers are going to block the cameras. But what I'm doing, I'm just uns unscrewing that screw in there. Before I take it out, the, the front meter is held in. You can see there are two, two tabs on this side and on the right hand side there's a, a washer which is held in with that screw. Unscrewing it. Just turn the bastard upside down. So yeah, on the right hand side, that's all it's holding it in. And with that gone, we can carefully just pull it out. like that. And you can see the uh, incandescent lamp back behind here. So we'll carefully remove the front of the meter. Now just remember when we put this back on, these two little uh, adjustment pins here, if you like, need to go back into the movement adjustment. So just be really careful you don't touch the meter movement at all. So soldering iron on, we will desolder the lamp. Right, so that's the lamp gone. We'll have a look at it while we're here. One of those long bulbs covered in some uh, blue plastic to give it a blue glow. Let's fit some LEDs. I went rummaging through my parts bin here and I found these uh, modules. These are LED modules designed to replace your uh, vehicle interior light, incandescent lights. Um, they come in various shapes and sizes. Um, so the, the way these would work, these would plug in instead of your incandescent lamp. So off this one, I ratted three of the LEDs. I had to uh, bend the pins over so they could be wired in series. But one thing I found was, <laughs> and check this before you start doing this sort of stuff, they're actually too wide to fit in behind the meter cover here. So they're about two millimeters uh, too wide because the cover just can't go back onto the meter with those LEDs fitted in there. All right, so I can't use those. I did have an order going into Element 14 anyway for some other stuff, and I was looking around on their website, and I came across these three millimeter high intensity white LEDs that have a 45 degree um, illumination angle. So that sounded pretty good. These are rated at 6,200 millicandelas. Now, do you remember the days where LEDs were rated in the tens or maybe hundreds of millicandelas? Candelas. These are 6,200. So I'm expecting these to be, um, to be relatively bright. So they're a little bit fiddly to, to work with. Um, and of course, as we know with LEDs, the, the long lead is the anode. So that, that'll go to the plus side. Uh, I bent the anode lead at 90 degrees so I could solder that to the, the cathode on the LED before it. And I could fit four across where the axial 
incandescent light went. And just to jump ahead, I've actually fitted it here. Oh, you'll notice this little red mark here, that's where the red wire uh, goes to, which is the center pin of the DCN, so that'll be the 13.8 volts. I'm actually gonna mount the resistor on the back side here, because for two reasons, there's more room and you know, you don't wanna see it at the front here. So as you can see, I've got four across there. Could have actually fit a fifth one, but I thought four would be enough. These outer two, they're slightly bent in angles to help spread the light, and the inner two pretty much point straight up. Irrespective of what LEDs you end up using, you're gonna to need to know two things about them, what their forward voltage is and what their average forward current is. For the three millimeter high intensity white LEDs I'm using, I happen to have measured the forward voltage at 2.9 volts and the average um, forward current is 25 milliamps. So when we hook four of these LEDs up in series, we know we're gonna have uh, four times 2.9, which is 11.6 volts across those LEDs. And with a 13.8 volt shack power supply, that's gonna leave us with 2.2 volts across that resistor. Now we know the LEDs like 25 milliamp, 25 milliamps, uh, and we know we've got 2.2 volts there. So a bit of basic Ohm's law, we can determine the value of the resistor. So R equals V on I, so we've got 2.2 over 25 milliamps expressed in amps, and that is gonna equal 88 ohms. Uh, power dissipation in that resistor, P equals V times I, we've got 2.2 times uh, 0.025, and that happens to equal 0.055 watts. So your typical quarter watt resistor or your 0.6 watt resistor that you can buy from anywhere is gonna have no problem with that. Let's get the front of the meter back on. This is probably the scariest bit. Just make sure you got a, a your small flat blade screwdriver at the handy to adjust the front. Just to make sure that these align up. These always seem to magically move for some reason. Good on that side. And this is the worst part about this. So they both look good. On the front, make sure we can adjust them. There's that one. And there's that one, so we're good. We calculated 88 ohms earlier on, but I've just, uh, I've got a 100 ohm resistor out of the junk box here. So I'm gonna fit that. LEDs won't be as bright, but I think they're gonna be pretty bright anyway. All right, resistor in place. My power supply here is set to 13.8 volts. Let's see what it looks like. Bit of dust, I think, is behind the cover, but there, what the hell. And we can see increasing that resistor from 88 ohms to 100 ohms, the current has dropped to 21 milliamps. Oh, well, that works. Let's see what it looks like with all the lights turned off here. This is gonna be hard to capture on video, but uh, it looks pretty good. That dust in there is probably gonna annoy me later, but anyway, that's a job for another day. All right, let's, um, let's get all the lights back on and mount the meter back where it belongs. So we've got the two tabs on that side and we just have the screw and the washer on this side. Where did our short stubby screwdriver go here? This, uh, this, the screw and the washer were originally glued together, which actually made it easier to work with. It's the, the glue has since separated. Let's 
Put the starter by finger and do the bastard up. Done. Connectors back on and we will screw the lid back on wherever I put that. One thing of this meter I've never really liked are the uh, front feet, they're hard plastic. So while I've got the thing out, I'm just gonna put some of these large adhesive feet on. I think the hard plastic can have a tendency to, to scratch the top of your transceiver. Oops. I think that is an improvement and There we go. That looks pretty good. I think four of these particular LEDs is, is more than enough. I'm glad I didn't fit five. And when you have a look at the old MFJ, doesn't the incandescent lamp look a bit sad? It's the following day and I thought, yeah, it, it's a little bit too bright. So what I've done, I've added a 100 ohm trim pot up the top here. The wiper of this is soldered directly to the DC coaxial connector and one side of the trim pot is uh, soldered to that, to that red wire, which goes off to that 100 ohm fixed value resistor. And you'll see the effect here. Provides a useful dimming range. I'll probably keep it all the way at the end. Uh, 100 ohms was just what I had in the junk box, you know, but you could do 100, 200, 500. And at the lowest uh, brightness level, we can see we're only drawing 12 milliamps. So that sort of current isn't really a problem for these types of trim pots. And I've also, and yes, the dust was bothering me, so I've got in there and carefully just wiped it down. So it's ready to, uh, to reassemble. Thanks for watching, and you'll see me next time. Cheers. Boo! Boo! That was the worst thing I ever heard! It was terrible! Horrendous! Well, it wasn't that bad. Oh, yeah? Oh, well, there were parts of it I liked. Yeah, I liked a lot of it. Yeah, it was good. It I... was great! It's wonderful! Oh, bravo! More! More! Now can I say it? Yep. Go away! Scrum! Get out of here! Get out of here! Skedaddle! Go away! Ham's gray! Well, come on. All right.